Hello and welcome to my video on DPF regeneration. My name is David Steltzer and I am the Senior Sales and Marketing Engineer at Safety Power Inc. So in this video, uh, we're going to describe uh, what is DPF regeneration. Uh, a lot of our customers ask this question and we're also going to talk about some of the different types of uh, regeneration. So I'll start off with a, a bit of background information. Uh, the typical application that I'm talking about today is uh, diesel, stationary diesel engines. So every diesel engine uh, produces particulate matter and most people are familiar with that. You know, if you drive on the highway, uh, the majority of big trucks are, are going to be producing uh, particulate matter uh, because they're, they're powered by diesel engines. Um, so particulate matter is also referred to as soot, and it's carbon particles that occur from incomplete combustion. And it's really a product of the, the diesel uh, engine process. So diesel engines have many big advantages. One disadvantage is they are going to produce particulate matter. The good news is there's a very easy and commercially uh, viable way to uh, remove or, or clean this particulate matter, and that's using a, a DPF filter. Uh, by far the most common type of DPF filter is a wall-through filter, and uh, this image here uh, shows a wall-through filter. Uh, you know, so if you look at the front cross-sectional area of that wall, through filter, you'd see a whole bunch of very, very tiny channels. And uh, this image here, it shows the cross-section and the flow uh, through one of these channels. So what happens is you have your flow with particulate matter uh, in it, and basically uh, the end of the channel is capped off, so it, it can't flow straight through. So it's forced through this filter uh, medium. And uh, what happens is uh, that filter medium basically captures the particulate matter and allows the rest of the flow to pass through. So uh, that's how the DPF works. Now, what you can imagine, I want you to imagine kind of a scenario is after a, a number of hours, uh, one of these engines, uh, of one of these engines operating, you're gonna get a lot of uh, soot buildup in that uh, filter, which isn't good, that's, that's going to increase the, the back pressure. Um, so what we need is, is we need a way of removing that soot, and that is the regeneration process. And um, how we remove it is we basically uh, complete the combustion of these carbon particles, uh, and we complete that through oxidating them. So one way, uh, the simplest way obviously chemically uh, to oxidize something is to heat it up. Um, so one way to do this is active regeneration. So this image shows soot uh, collected on the particulate filter. Um, and if you apply enough heat, you need a, a lot of heat, um, you can basically oxidize that soot. Uh, and you know, like any combustion, process, the result of that oxidation will be uh, carbon dioxide and, and water vapor, uh, you know, which is great. Um, there's two common ways to do this. One is by adding fuel, you know, basically combusting excess fuel in front of the DPF uh, filter. Uh, that typically isn't used on stationary applications because uh, combusting fuel generates a whole bunch of unwanted emissions. Uh, the second way is to use uh, electricity. Uh, there are some systems out there. Um, the, the, the problem with electricity is, is you need a lot of electricity. So if you have a, a, you know, a two megawatt gen set, you need a upwards of 50, 60 kilowatts. So, you know, high voltage power, um, you know, which, makes these systems very expensive because there's you know very specific approvals you need for those types of, of voltages uh, and and they're fairly complex so uh, this is definitely one way uh, the simplest chemically to uh, achieve uh, regeneration 
of the oxidation or of the DPF filter. Now the good news is there there's another way to do this, um, and this is by far uh, the most common way to regen DPF filters, and it's referred to as passive regeneration. And uh, what happens is basically NO2 uh, particles uh, react with soot particles, uh, and you know at temperatures ab above 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you know, this process occurs and, and it's the same oxidation process, so the same net result. Um, so, so that's great because uh, 550 degrees F, uh, you know, is very common uh, for the exhaust temperature of, of diesel engines. Typically, they're, they're uh, greater than that 550 degrees F. Um, the, the only kind of hiccup with this is um, there's not always a lot of NO2 in the uh, exhaust, in the engine exhaust. So there's an additional step. Uh, basically, there is a lot of NO, which is great. Uh, so the additional step is basically uh, you need an oxidation catalyst. And the oxidation catalyst oxidizes a certain percentage of this NO into NO2. So, you know, just to summary, summarize passive regeneration, um, it, it's a two-step process. Basically, you have an oxidation catalyst to oxidize a certain percentage of NO into NO2 so that that passive regeneration can occur on the DPF filter. So passive regeneration is the type of technology that safety power uses. Um, and you know, here's some lab tests of a system at uh, 350 degrees C, and uh, this test just shows a, a fully sooted um, filter, so there's a high back pressure across the filter, and you can see, uh, you know, that regeneration process occur, and um, you know that's really illustrated by by the declining pressure drop across that filter. Here are some images, so. Our uh, filter oxidation module or FOX module, um, you know, this is an engine. Here it is not hooked up to the filter oxidation module. So you can see the exhaust coming up, coming out, and it's uh, dirty with lots of soot. And here it is hooked up to the diesel uh, or filter oxidation module, and the engine's running, and there's really not much, uh, you know, visible particulate matter. So, you know, to summarize this all up, uh, passive regeneration is by far the most common way to regenerate DPF filters. It's space efficient, cost effective, uh, there's no high voltage required. Um, there are some disadvantages. Uh, it does require an engine to be loaded every so often. You know, so it's it very common, most of our customers uh, we'll do an annual load test once a year, and uh, that's more than sufficient to uh, to regen the DPF. Um, the the other uh, limitation is you are limited to about 1,500 annual run hours uh, using this application. So, unfortunately, if, if you go over that, if if you have a, a prime power continuous operation uh, active regeneration uh, is, is likely required in those types of scenarios. Hope you found this video helpful. Uh, very happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, thanks for watching.